Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Trix AK Nico. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about dungeons, in particular about the dungeon class system. Ever since it was announced, I was fascinated with how people were preparing for something they couldn't wait to play. And if you're like me, you're probably wondering what exactly to prepare for, except for grinding skills, which is, for example, perfectly represented by Max's road to level 50 in every single skill. And to answer exactly that question, we're now going to take a look at the mage class. The mage is probably also known as a wizard in other games, who represents the magical damage dealer of the team. Since this player wants to focus mostly on his magic abilities, combined and with its ability damage, this kit's 50% ability damage boost, as well as the 25% intelligence or mana boost, is basically the perfect fit. The passive even further improves this kit by adding one of the most controversial abilities within all dungeon classes. Basically what mage stuff does is switch your melee attacks to now be ranged and deal damage based on your mana instead of your strength and damage, as you would normally know it from the other parts of the game. Here the efficient spells ability comes even more handy since now that you don't, don't even need abilities to get ranged attacks, but if you want to use your abilities, you will have an even easier way going to do so with the 25% cooldown reduction. The dungeon orb of the mage will, with its ability guide a sheep, just shoots a sheep into the direction you're looking and it basically acts as a replica or copy of the explosive arrow from the archer class but instead of dealing normal damage, the explosion that is created on impact with the sheep now scales off of your mage's level. The ultimate, called thunderstorm, also explains the ability pretty good. Over a time span of 15 seconds you cast lightning strikes onto monsters within a 10 block radius. This doesn't only make up for a great attack but also could help you a ton when you want to escape from a dangerous situation. And for the ghost abilities, meaning as long as the mage is dead, you will have two abilities. The first being instant wall, which again explains the ability pretty nicely. It creates a wall to either help out a teammate escape from an enemy or to trap enemies to not being able to escape. And the second ability is called fireball. I'm not going to explain that. So now that we know what the mage brings along, let's take a look at how we actually want to prepare for it. Before we go on, I really quickly have to say this again, that everything that is following is going to be based on the current game standards. Therefore, it might change in, in ways that I'm obviously not able to predict at the moment. And with that said, I, I will also not include leaked or shown dungeon gear items, as this should help you prepare and you can't really do that if it's unavailable content that I'm talking about. Also, I'm gonna mention this again, it's probably a good idea to let you know that I've not only played dungeons myself on the alpha server, but I've also got a lot of different heads behind my following ideas on a good preparation. So starting out, as we already established, the mage is the magical damage dealer who wants to use ability power and intelligence to deal magical damage. Therefore, intelligence, which is achieved by leveling your alchemy and enchanting skill, is probably the most important path on this class. Obviously, not unlike the healer, you also want to focus on getting more sustainability by leveling the health and defense skill, namely farming, fishing and mining, but since magic damage is mostly supported by your mana pool, the path is pretty easy to follow. Beginning with the armor sets, you can see that I chose the Very Wise as well as the Superior Dragon set. The Very Wise is really self-explanatory. You want mana, you got a lot of mana, and you want to use your abilities, which will now cost even less. The Superior on the other hand might need some explanation, since I already played dungeons, I was able to tell that even though intelligence is a very important part of a mage. In the floors that I've played though, it wasn't really too necessary to have mana, therefore the superior armor with its all-rounder kit was actually a pretty viable choice as well. Combine these sets with the following pets, especially picked because of their intelligent boosts and great abilities, as for example the sheep ability's cost reduction, the guardian's mana regeneration or the baby yeti's buff to the yeti sword, you will have a pretty solid build for the upcoming floors on dungeons. The tiger, as it's the only exception, is mainly included because, and don't quote me on that, but the thought of having the chance of double hitting the ranged attacks seems extremely overpowered. Now moving on to a sword and weapon decision, here I would actually highly recommend the pigment sword, since the fact that you can basically spam its ability not only seems, but actually was pretty great, it seems as a far better option over the aspect of the dragon, which only shoots monsters away from you, and the miters that doesn't even come with an effect in the first place. The yeti sword obviously is one of the best choices here, its ability with its current 1 second cooldown, and even with its great mana cost is still insanely strong, and combine that with the baby yeti pet, and you will have an insanely powerful combination. 
Lastly, I want to mention the Ink Wand and the Voodoo Doll. Even though both of them have setbacks, as the Ink Wand, for example, has a 30 seconds cooldown by the time that I'm recording this video, and the Voodoo Doll, even though it does a lot of damage to current monsters with 1,500 damage, it isn't really too much facing against monsters that have almost 10 times that health, even on lower level dungeon floors. The last item that also didn't really make the list was the Frozen Scythe, and reasons for that is its insignificant damage damage combined with its high mana cost doesn't make up for an item even considering to be worth in the mage's kit, even acknowledging its ability to slow down enemy monsters. So to sum it all up, the mage class is going to be a class that tries to introduce this new idea of ability damage. As far as I've seen, they have done a pretty good job, but it obviously needs and probably is also going to be tweaked here and there to make it fit even better with the current damage system. And since, like I already said in all the other videos, I didn't include already shown or leaked items, I would also not advise to head out and spend all your money buying exactly what is shown on the screen right now if you can't afford it. The perfect example would be the ink wand, which is pretty expensive for the little help it actually provides. This is just a preparation of what I think is going to be a top tier start out for the mage class, and since I think there is going to be a lot of new items, especially supporting the mage class, I would say if you want to prepare for the class, it's always good looking at paths you could choose from, but not only strictly following them, since there is a lot of new content coming out that we actually might not even know of. And if this video helped you out or you want to take a closer look at the images yourself, I linked them down below, they're on my website. I've posted actually all of them on my website for a better overview. Or if you have any questions, ideas or you want to share your opinion with me, feel free to either follow me on Twitter or message me on Twitter and join my Discord, which are also both linked down in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, I would obviously appreciate a like since this was a lot of work and it would show that you want to see more of this type of content. And last but not least, obviously you could subscribe if you enjoy what you see here and if you want to stay up to date and be notified as soon as I upload then feel free to hit the bell as well. Since this was a five part series though I will just quickly mention that a video is coming out every other day since I wanted them to come out at an actual upload schedule so I hope I'll see you in the next one and since this is basically it thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day.